Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I've got another cheap tablet that's actually pretty nice for its price point. This one from Walmart under their on brand. This is the new 11 inch Pro. And this one is running Android and you can get your Google Play Store loaded up on it and get all of your Android apps running. This one is very similar to the 11 inch tablet we just looked at from Amazon. But again, this one is running with Google's official Android operating system and has a greater app library as a result. And we're gonna take a closer look at this tablet and what it's all about in just a second. But I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this tablet is all about. Now they've packed a lot of value into this device. It comes in at only $159. It has an 11 inch display that's running at 1200 by 2000. It looks very nice because you're packing a lot of resolution into a relatively small display. And it's essentially 1080p, although it's a bit wider than a typical 1080p display might be. So when you have it in portrait mode like this, you'll have a lot of screen real estate for scrolling through web pages and documents and books and that sort of thing. Text looks very nice on this, it's very legible. My only complaint with the display is that it runs a little on the colder side, so whites on the screen will have a little bit more of a bluer hue than I would typically like, but it doesn't feel cheap to me. It feels like a pretty nice display and it's able to, of course, play back Netflix and other video services quite nicely too. And it's pretty well constructed too. It weighs about a pound or 490 grams. It's got metal here on the back along with glass on the front. It actually feels very similar to what we just saw from Amazon with their 11 inch tablet. And I wouldn't be surprised if these are coming out of the same factory. That said, the Amazon one, which costs a little bit more normally, feels a little nicer, but this one is very, very close in its overall look and feel. Inside, it has similar specifications to that Amazon tablet, a MediaTek MT8781V slash NA. That's got two A76 cores and six A55 cores, if you are technical and want to know about that. It also has four gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. And on top of that, you've got an SD card slot here at the top of it, so you can put in even more storage if you run out. So it's nice to see some expandability here. Now, unlike the Amazon tablet, it does not have a fingerprint reader for unlocking, so you do have to type your pin code in every time. But this one, unlike the Amazon tablet, does have a headphone jack here at the bottom, so you can plug in a good old pair of headphones if you want. They barely fit it in there. And you also have a USB Type-C port here for charging. This is not a rapidly charging device. It comes with a standard two amp power adapter in the box. And also this does not do video output, although these Android tablets do support mirroring their display to a Chromecast compatible device. Now this one has two cameras, one on the back and one on the front. The back camera has a little bit more resolution at eight megapixels than the five megapixel camera here on the front, but neither are very good. As you can see here, you don't have a stabilizer on the video. The rear camera only shoots at 1080p at 30 frames per second, but it looks okay. You can also see some photo examples here that I took a little bit earlier. So its photos are passable for the price point out of the rear camera, but it won't rival something more expensive. The front camera is a lower resolution, as I mentioned, and it shoots video only at 720p but certainly good enough for doing conference calls with Zoom and other apps, and this of course supports that. The camera is uh, basically landscape oriented here, so they really want you using this thing uh, in its landscape orientation for video conferencing. You do have stereo speakers on this, a speaker here on the left and on the right. You get decent stereo separation, but you lose the stereo when you've got it in portrait mode because your speakers go from left to right to up and down, but it's nice to see that it does have stereo at least. The speaker quality isn't great, so not so good for music, but of course you could plug headphones into it or connect up Bluetooth headphones as well. All right, let's take a look now and see how this performs, and we'll begin with the basics here, some web browsing, and work our way up from there. So we'll load up the Chrome browser here and we'll go and visit my favorite website, the nasa.gov homepage. And as you can see, things pop up here pretty quickly. This is running Android 13. So it's pretty much up to date on the OS, at least at the time I'm shooting this video. There was a pretty big update waiting for me when I took it out of the box. And I suspect that when you first get it, 
It's going to feel a little sluggish. You might see a reduction in battery life as well because it will be running that update in the background. After it settles down, you'll have, I think, very good performance here for the price point. And as I navigate around the page here, you can see how quickly everything pops up. This does not have Wi-Fi 6 on board, just AC Wi-Fi, but for what it has under the hood, I think that is just fine, and the tablet seems to be working pretty well here. You will get a little more screen real estate when you have it in its portrait orientation, as I mentioned earlier, so you can fit quite a bit of a web page here on the screen uh, when you flip it around and sit down to read what's on there. Additionally, it supports split screen, so I could take YouTube here and just kind of drag it off to the side. I did find that it sometimes gets a little messed up here and I have to just adjust the uh, little slider here to get everything to fit. Um, but I can play a video on this side and browse the web on the other side, and I could also have two web browser windows open if I want. So a lot of the modern Android features are here, and you can very easily uh, get those features to work without a lot of lag or slowdown. Now it apparently also has some kind of Google Entertainment Hub on here that I can't seem to get working. Uh, you'll see that here on the home screen, and when you click on that, you'll get recommendations for media to watch along with games and books and other things, but right now it just does that, so hopefully that will get fixed at some point in the near future. And I also noticed that there was a spelling error on one of the setup screens I was going through when I was getting the tablet configured, so I think there's some polish issues here that Walmart's got to work out. As far as battery life is concerned, if you're sticking to the basics, Walmart is saying about 16 hours of battery life. Reality is probably in the 12 to 13 hour standpoint there, uh, but I think you'll definitely get a full day out of this if you're sticking to the basics. If you load up games or do things that tax its little processor more, that of course will eat into the battery life, and of course running the display at full brightness also has an impact. But the battery life on this I think will be competitive against some of the lower end iPads you might be looking at. Now you can share the tablet with multiple users in your household and everybody gets their own profile. They also have a kids interface now for these Android tablets. I've got it logged in right now to my daughter's account. And you have a lot of control over what they can and can't do. And it's also age appropriate. So she's going into fifth grade in a few weeks here and she's got books that are at her grade level. These are free books, at least as far as I can see. And every couple of days, apparently, you get different books to read here. And it's got a nice natural feel to the page turns and everything. I thought that was pretty nice, especially given that it's free. There's app recommendations, and the kids can specify some of their interests when they're setting it up to get things that might engage them a bit. And you can also control how long they can stay on the tablet for. You can restrict any website browsing. There's a lot of control that you'll get within the Google parent interface there. So pretty cool stuff if you've got kids and are looking for an inexpensive tablet. And speaking of kids, it runs Roblox and Minecraft just fine. I've got Roblox loaded up here with the Cookie Swirl Sea World that my daughters like to play around in. And it's running great. It doesn't run perhaps as nicely as it might on a more expensive iPad, but certainly compared to what $160 would buy you a year ago, it is very, very playable here. I was also able to pair up my Xbox controller over Bluetooth, and all is good here and playable. Let's take a look at a few other things. Now, this game is called Sky, and it's running quite smoothly on here. One thing you'll notice, though, with these inexpensive tablets is that the games will often reduce their visual quality in order to have smooth frame rates like this one is doing. So the graphics will look a little fuzzier, perhaps, but you will get very playable gameplay experiences on this very inexpensive tablet. But if you spend more on a better tablet, you'll of course get sharper images. Now this also does a great job of streaming games. You can do that in the home with Steam and other apps that allow for that sort of thing, but you can also stream from game services like I am right now. So this game is an Xbox Game Pass game that I'm running uh, through the Xbox Game Pass app and it looks and plays great on here along with my Xbox controller. I can even hit the center button there and pull up all the Xbox stuff as I'm playing around here. So game streaming is a great application for a low cost device like this. And as far as emulating other systems, I found that it's just powerful enough to run some of the less demanding GameCube games out there. So this one is Burnout 2 and it's running pretty much at 60 frames per second here. Very, very playable. Uh, but some of the more demanding games might struggle a bit. I also tried to play some PlayStation 2 games on this, and that was a bridge too far. So you'll have mixed results with some of the more advanced console emulation, 
but certainly some of the older consoles from the 80s and early 90s, like the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo, should run great on here, along with other consoles like the PlayStation 1. And on the 3D Mark Wildlife Benchmark Test, we got a score of 1,192, and that is pretty much where the Amazon Fire Max 11 came in, insofar as gaming performance is concerned. And this is right up there with the Logitech G handheld as well. But you'll note there at the top is the iPad 9th generation. The reason why I put that one up on here is that currently it is selling at $279 at Walmart. That's the previous generation of the 10-inch basic level iPad. And you can see just how much more powerful that device is over this one. But you can almost buy two of these for what one of those iPads cost. There's not much to really complain about here, especially given what you're paying for it. But there are some issues like when you have your thumb resting on the side of the display here, it gets all confused about what's going on. You've got to be very careful not to put your fingers too far off the bezel here, otherwise everything goes south on you. Now the Amazon tablet has support for USI 2.0 compatible stylus devices like this one. These bring pressure sensitivity and multifunction buttons and all sorts of cool stuff. This one doesn't support it at all, so if you bring the pen near it, nothing happens. It'll work with a capacitive stylus, but you won't get all the advanced features that a US iPen will bring you. Now you do get a one-year warranty on this, so if something goes wrong, you could probably just take it back to your local Walmart store and get it rectified. I don't know, though, how long Walmart supports these devices. It varies from one device to the next, but I would expect maybe to get a year or two of updates out of this thing, and it'll still work, but you may not see any new OS updates come down over the long term. But still, for the price point, if you're looking for some basic transportation here, I'm really impressed what $160 buys you in 2023. This is definitely going to feel a little more expensive than it is. Uh, it's quite functional. It's a very pure Android experience. I'm not seeing any Walmart stuff getting thrown at me here. They did pre-install the Walmart app, but I can live with that. Um, so overall, a pretty nice experience here from Walmart with a very affordable device that is actually quite functional. So that's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and I'm the Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.